Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jimmy, and as of the recording of this video, it is March 12th, a little after 8 p.m., and Samsung has launched several application updates for your Samsung Galaxy devices that are running on Samsung One UI 7 with Android 15. So that means that it's going off after those Galaxy S25 devices, the Galaxy S24 series if you're running on the One UI 7 beta. It's also being pushed out for the Galaxy Z Flip 6 and the Fold 6 if you're running on beta for those. And then soon to be added to the list of beta, which would be the Galaxy S23 series and the Galaxy Tab S10, which would be later this month during the month of March. Now, there's a few different applications that's actually updated that I missed. I was able to stop it and find these ones here. So on the Galaxy S25 series, they pretty much all updated, but I was able to find this one at the very tail end, and this is Expert Raw. So pretty much if you own any of these devices, Expert Raw has an update, and there's actually quite a few additional brand new features uh, and settings that you're able to use with Expert Raw. Also, you'll have an update for your voice recorder. So as you scroll on down, you'll see that this one was launched on March 10th. The Expert Raw was also launched on March 10th, which was just a couple days ago. For Samsung Internet Browser, this one has a lot of uh, bug fixed and also some improved stability. Your Samsung Internet Browser, this one was updated March 11th, which was yesterday. You can also take a look at Clock. This one has improved and stabilized uh, some features as well. So if we take a look at clock, as you scroll on down, you'll see that this one was updated March 11th. Uh, when it comes down to the calculator, this one was updated March 7th. So it looks like this one is just a few days ago. Uh, Samsung Cloud, as it goes down the list, more than likely it's all gonna be around like the 7th and the 8th. Looks like this one is the 5th. Uh, for good luck, you also have the improved app uh, stabilization, modified some phrases. I know that some of the uh, phrases was changed with some of the modules. So they were able to rephrase it to have it sound just a little bit more clear of exactly what some of those modules are doing. This one was updated on March 6th. And then the Display Assistant, if you haven't used the Display Assistant beta before, it's pretty nice that they're finally adding in the support for One UI 7. And this one was updated on March 7th. So some of the things that you can do with the display assistant, it's easier to actually just show you these screenshots here because I don't have it set up yet on One UI 7 as it's just now finally available for it. But you can choose different screen timeouts for each application. So if you know for a fact that you're somebody who always loves to play a game uh, and you want it to actually keep on running because maybe time is of the essence and you earn more points, you can have it have a longer timeout. Maybe you're somebody who is going to sleep watching an application. So if you're somebody who you know maybe looks at Amazon as you sleep or you look at TikTok or you look at something else, pretty much you can put a timeout for two minutes. So this way it's not just gonna always stay on after you shut your eyes, or you can even do 30 seconds if you want that as well. Uh, you can provide screen uh, on feature. So pretty much you can keep the screen on for 30 minutes. So on your phone stock, you can have your screen timeout be you know 30 seconds, I believe it's like two minutes, five minutes, and 10 minutes. Now if you want, you can actually keep the screen on for 30. Uh, and then the only way that you can turn off the display is if you press the power key, uh, you know, do a device reboot or if the battery goes below 15%. You can also provide brightness limits. So you can have it as standard, which is brightness is limited at high temperatures. So this way, if your phone gets pretty hot because it's sitting outside, it's super hot outside, or you're in a sauna, then pretty much the brightness will be limited at the high temperatures. Or you can have it as light, which means brightness can be kept up at high temperatures, but the device cools down slowly. And then you can also change how fast you want it to change between your brightnesses. So when you have your phone set up to where you have the adaptive brightness, you can change the speed at which it is changing those brightnesses. So if you are from the inside of your home to the outside of your home, if you want it to change the speed of that brightness quicker, you can put it up to 4X. And that is what the display assistant is. So pretty much all I'm gonna do here, because we kind of looked at some of these dates already and some of these changes, I'm going to hit on this install button just to get all of them going. Now, the other thing that I was actually waiting for, which was actually why I wanted to kind of shoot this video, but then I found everything else sitting there, is because I'm waiting for an update to the camera, again, on One UI 7, Android 15, Samsung Galaxy devices. So if you don't see an update for your camera just yet, 
you will actually find a newer version right in that same place that I showed you. Now, if you're wondering where all these updates are sitting, all you'd have to do is just go inside of your Galaxy Store application and you wanna move over into this menu option on the very right hand side. Right there is where you have your updates and normally it'll have a number there in orange, letting you know if there's one, two, three, four, 10 or 15 app updates and they would sit there. Now this phone here missed a lot of these updates. So if you ever want to catch everything as it happens and you find yourself just wanting to look at the Galaxy Store every few days for updates, you can do it this way. Once you're inside of your Galaxy Store, underneath the option of menu on the very top right hand side you go to settings and you go right here for the auto update apps and i switched it to never originally it was on wi-fi only but as a youtuber i like to catch a lot of these and sometimes as you as a normal consumer or of the device maybe you'd like to see what is being updated other than that you would have to just manually look through all of your applications to see when they possibly have been updated so I switched mine to never just so then this way I'd be able to catch it because what happens is that if you catch it, you can read what is new. So pretty much what's going to happen now is I'm just going to head over into my expert raw application because there was a uh, little orange dots that lets me know that there are some new features. So inside of expert raw for this update, you tap right over here. You can see those three little orange dots. Now this right here, 24 megapixel. If I remember right, uh, there was an option above it and below it that was there originally. So it was the 12 megapixel, 50 and 200. I believe on this phone over here for the expert raw, it was only 12 and 50. And now it has the option for 24. So when it comes down to this new update, the option for 24 megapixel is now the new feature that is a part of expert raw. So you can either take it in these four different options rather than three. Now, next up, you also have this option right over here, which is the exposure monitor. And I don't know exactly 100% of what was all added in. I believe it was actually this entire brand new setup anyways, because this was a part of the regular Samsung camera. And my guess is that they threw in the zebra pattern and false color uh, for when you are taking some pictures. So this way you can see a lot of the exposures. Is it over exposure? Is it less exposure? And you'll be able to find it with a pattern. So if you start seeing these lines, that means that there's too much light going to one area. And you can also change this value a little bit. So if you want it to be just a little bit, you know, uh, more sensitive to it as well. So you can see all of that little zebra pattern that was happening from before. And if I bring it all the way up to 100%, now I can kind of see, you know, um, like right there, like you can see on my table, like right there to the left of my, of my phone, you can see that it's very, very bright. So if I bring this down just a little bit, um, right there down to about 90, you can start seeing that zebra pattern, letting me know that in this shot, there's overexposure right there. Now, if I move it this way a little bit more, it's going to add in a little bit more light to the shot. So this just kind of depends on the value of what you want it to be. So you can kind of bring it down a little bit so you can have it be a little bit more sensitive so you can find where is the overexposed area, where is it super, super light, at least with that frame. And again, you can just move on back. You can tilt it over a little bit and you could change your framing so you wouldn't have as much of the, uh, the overexposure. So now that you have played a little bit with that zebra option, I'm just gonna turn it all, all the way off. Then we're gonna move right on back. We're gonna open this up because this is our menu. And then we're gonna go inside the settings again to see what also is new. Scrolling on down, you have the option for auto share to PC or tablet. So we're gonna tap on this one. So it just basically allows you to automatically send the pictures to a nearby Galaxy book or tablet. The device you're sending to needs to be signed in with your Samsung account. So any Samsung phone that you have, you should always be logged in with your Samsung account. It gives you a lot of options. You'd be able to find your lost phone. Uh, you'd be able to remotely lock it. There's a lot of things that you're able to do, especially when it comes down to connecting and sharing with all the rest of your other devices. So you can see here that this update for Expert Raw is actually bigger than normal as it is adding in three brand new features. Now, another little update that you might also find is for your always on display. So that right there is my lock screen. This right here is the always on display. There was an update pushed out to kind of help a little bit of text on the screen. And also 
make it allowable and better use when it comes down into your live uh, notifications for sports. So like, you know, when you take a look at your now bar on the bottom, or if you have live notifications on the top of your phone, it's using the Google sports that you have set up. So pretty much where you're, where you're able to set all of the stuff up is, is when you go inside of your settings, you scroll all the way down, you take a look at your lock screen and always on display. And then with this one, you have your now bar. So again, with the now bar, you have the option for sports from Google. You pretty much just tap there. And then you just tap here again, and this is where you can change some of your settings. Now, for me, I just have it set up for the Chiefs. I used to watch college football. I also used to watch a lot of Major League Baseball, uh, but pretty much just kind of narrowed it down to this one. This is pretty much all I kind of watch. Um, you may have a bunch of different teams you'd be able to watch. Here's your recommended. You can actually go through every single category in one little menu right here. Just do these little arrows, select your teams. You can bring your arrow up, go to your next sport, choose your teams, go to the next one. Unless if you just want to bring it all the way down to like maybe basketball or football or soccer, however you want it to be. Let's say that you choose like, let's say football. Uh, then you can go into like NFL. And again, there's all of your teams. So if there's several teams you follow, maybe do a lot of um, the fantasy football type stuff, you'd be able to choose your teams right here. And all of these that has been chosen will now be able to show up uh, on your lock screen inside of the now bar as a live notification. And it'll also show up on the very top and you'd be able to tap it for it to kind of expand a little bit more as well. And then pretty much they just kind of refined it for your always on display. So pretty much I'm still waiting for that latest update for the camera. There's a couple ways that you can take a look at your camera to see if you have the latest version. First off, you can just open up the camera itself go inside of the settings, go all the way down and you go to about camera. This will show you which version you have. The other way you can take a look at it is by pressing and holding, going to the eye, going all the way down and you can see this version here. So you can see that this version on the S24 series with beta is a newer version than what I have on the S25 series. And I'm waiting for a lot of updates to still kind of come here and I'm still waiting for that March 1st security patch as well. But pretty much I'll have a better stability when it comes down to the application, better performance. So if you had any issues, uh, they were able to refine some of those here with inside of the camera. So when it comes down to actually taking a look to see if there is a update for your camera, you just go right inside of your settings. This is where you go all the way down. You take a look at about camera. And if there's an update, you'll actually see it there and you can actually hit on update in that screen. Or all you'd have to do is just go right inside of your Galaxy Store and it might actually even show up underneath your menu and you go to updates and it might just sit right there with a update waiting for you. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover in today's video. It's not just for the Galaxy S25 series for all of these several updates. Uh, it's also spanning across the other Samsung phones running Android 15 with One UI 7 beta. And some of those applications you will also find in other Samsung phones um, that is not on beta where there's just newer versions and it doesn't need to have any stability fixes or bug fixes for One UI 7. But hopefully you guys have appreciated this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit and subscribe. Subscribe on the very bottom left-hand side. And if you like this video, the more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.